So today we are going to talk about something different, intro of Yi Jing. As you all know, Yi Jing is really, really difficult. It's really, really difficult. So in order to ease the pain, it's, it's important to have a good foundation. Having good foundation is important. So this session is really inspired from chapter 14. In chapter 14, we talk about Dao's characteristic. So Lao Zi in the first intro section give us the definition of Dao. Dao is invisible, inaudible, and intangible. One day I was thinking about invisible, inaudible, and intangible. So invisible, inaudible, and intangible, it's not, it's not really enough because if we think about it, ghosts fall into this category. Coronavirus fall into this category. Therefore, this three is not enough to describe Tao because many things that is invisible, inaudible, and intangible to the human perception will fall into this category. Therefore, one is very important. So I thought about one. One is an important concept in Yi Jing too. So the session today is really from this verse here, one. The three cannot be fully explained that they are combined together as one. So that's why I come up with this topic, the correlation of numbers behind eight triagrams. And because uh, we are all new to I Ching, so I thought this would be good to start. From time to time, I will talk about this to put it into our Dao De Jing session. Okay, so the number behind I Ching, more specifically, it's about the eight triagrams. So the eight triagrams, if we want to study this, we will have to wonder, what is this made out of? So originally it was made out of this. So now we have a lot of questions. How does this one become this? This was my question many years ago and I couldn't figure it out. So it's through of many years of study, I figured it out and I thought that it's a good idea to share with you all. So let's look at this picture. So this picture is made of um, that. Um, so this one, this picture is really important because uh, if we think about our daily life, sometimes we will wonder why this thing is made out of certain number. So let's look at this. This is one of the architectural um, structure in one of the Dao Temple in Taiwan. They have this great wall. And on this great wall, it has nine dragons. So nine dragon represent the maximum number from yen. And you say, why is it the maximum number from yen? And then let's look at this picture. Five Buddha statue. Why not three? Why not six? Why not two? But it happens to be five. And five means the center among the yen series. So this is a picture from Tenshin Temple. So there's a reason for five. There's a reason for nine. And if we look at this, this is also another picture from the Dao Temple in Taiwan. They have a five Buddha statue. And on the altar, it's very common that we see the three names on the altar. So why not put two? Here, there's three. So this name here, it's the, the Tai Chi or the Wu Chi. And from the Tai Chi, it becomes the duality, which is the the sun and the moon, the yin and the yang. That's why it's three. So this is like the creation of the beginning from the wu qi. And here on this picture, this is, by the way, this is from the same temple. You can see there is a prayer cushion. It has 11 columns. So it just seems like the odd number is a more auspicious numbers. Now let's look at this. So if you will go to the Tao Temple, you will see a lot of arrangement is based on the art number, such as on the altar, when we do the fruit offerings, we would have the arrangement based on the Yi Jing. Say if you have a, say you have a small prayer hall, you, you just have three 
plate, then you will put this arrangement. And what happens if you have four plate, you will put each row with odd numbers. So there will be three and one and five, five is the best number. And if you have six, then you will put five and one. So this is seven and this is eight and this is nine. So notice in nine, you don't put five, four. Instead, you put five, three, one. Because you want to keep each row as odd number. And then on the 10, you will have five and five. And guess if you have 11, what are you going to put? You're going to put the, the last one right here. If you have two, then you will just put two right here. So we just try to have our number for each row when we do the fruit offering. In order to understand the concept of the number, we have to talk about the eight triagrams. To study the eight triagrams, we have to find out who invented. It's always good to know where does the triagram come from. And here I want to share with you the lineage of Tao transmission. The lineage of Tao transmission. And that's related to the 64 hexagram. So um, if we were to divide all the era into three time zones, then we can divide them into the early 18 Eastern Patriarchs, and then the middle 28 Western Patriarchs, the later 18 Eastern Patriarchs. So that will make up total 64. So let me show you who are the 18 Eastern Patriarchs, the middle one and the later one. This is the early 18 Eastern Patriarch. Let's look at the first one. So the green one is the one that I highlighted for you. I highlighted green because these are the person or the patriarch who has association with the aging development. First one is Patriarch Fuxi, who is our first patriarch. Second is the patriarch uh, Xia Yu. So Xia Yu is like the, the name of the dynasty and Yu is his name. So if we were convert that into the modern time, say right now we are under Biden administration. In the old time, they would say the Biden dynasty. But in before Biden, uh, Trump will call his dynasty as uh, the Trump dynasty. So that's that's how the ancient China named its dynasty under the emperor's name. Okay. So here, as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, five being highlighted in green. So the third one is Patriarch King Wen of Zhou. So this person is important because uh, he, he gives a notation to the Yi Jing. But his annotation is very brief because he did the annotation in jail. Therefore, it has to be very brief, but the message is. Uh, it has a lot of hidden meaning. It was until his um, son, this is his fourth son, Patriarch Duke of Chiu, give a further interpretation on, on his father's um, interpretation. But again, for us to study Yi Jing, <laughs> Duke of Chiu's uh, interpretation is not enough because uh, we just don't have enough divine knowledge. Therefore, uh, Confucius come into place and he gave a lot of annotation, which allowed the later um, scholar to understand what the uh, Duke of Chiu's annotation is really about. So uh, Confucius played a very, very big role in annotating Yi Jing. So today, we will put our focus on Fuxi, and just a, a little focus on Xia Yu, Patriarch Xia Yu, because uh, he is the one who discovered the marking on the turtle. Fuxi discovered the marking on the horse. So now we go to the second era, which is the middle 28th Western Patriarch. All these Patriarchs are from India. 
you can see Mahakashyapa, who is the number one disciple of uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. The second one is Ananda. Uh, these two persons that we always hear when we do the Tao sharing session. And the number 28 is Uridama. Now let's come to the third one, the later 18th Eastern Patriarch. So notice that on this uh, Bodhidharma, he's also being repeated on this slide too. He was the last one. He was the last one here and uh, the first one here too. So his name is being repeated twice. And uh, here, I want to, I want you to pay attention to here. The 13th is being repeated twice because they do have a very short life due to um, they were trying to propagate Tao in the wrong time because in the early age, Tao was not supposed to be propagated widely. So they had a short life, very short life. And uh, on the 17th Patriarch, Lu Zhongyi, uh, this one I want to point out, he is the reincarnation of Buddha Maitreya. If we will go to the Tao Temple, usually we will see Buddha Maitreya statue in the middle. So that's his uh, incarnation, Patriarch Lu Zhongyi. And the uh, 18th Patriarch, we have two, Patriarch Zhang Tianran and Maitreya Sun Huiming, whom we call Si Jun and Si Mu. If you attend my previous session, I always end my session's name. I, I always repeat this verse. If mistake were made or say during today's sharing, da, 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 and then I will end it with Sijun and Simu. So I want to give thanks to Sijun and Simu because they are our last two patriarchs in the, in the la last era. And today you will hear me say that again towards the end of the session. So the eight triagrams, they actually come from the dots, the formation. So there's a number behind each triagram. On the early heaven triagram, it's originated from the horse marking. And this is the discovery from the first patriarch, Fu Xi. And the later heaven triagrams is originated from the marking from turtle. And this is the divine discovery from the ninth patriarch, Xia Yu. But because the session today is very limited, I will just focus on here. So the marking of the horse was discovered in Yellow River. And here's the map of China. This is the Yellow River. So it was one day, Fu Xi was looking, he was in the high above mountain, and he was looking at the river, suddenly he saw some kind of creature come out from the river. And this creature, miraculously, it's a horse. Can you imagine a horse come out from the river? Horse supposed to walk on the ground, but this horse come from the river. And this horse is strange because the horse body it's more than eight feet and it's very tall and it has a dragon head. As you can see in the whisker is coming, coming out from the horse. So it looks like a dragon and it has a horse body. It has a lion tail. It's not the same as the horse tail. It's very strange looking. And then here in the characteristic in number five is that it has cow's feet. So cow has two hoofs in each feet. And this is the picture that I find. Because <laughs> I am a city girl, I don't really know what does the cow feet and horse feet look like. So I, I assume every one of you are the same too. So this is the horse feet. So the horse feet is not, it does not have the division of the hoof. So the cow's feet, it has. So on this particular horse, it has a cow's feet. And it has a long hairy feet. So the feet, it grows out hair. Of course, cow has some kind of hair, but this particular horse, it has longer hair than the regular horse, which I imagine it enables the horse to fly. 
and then the feather on the limb. Um, there is also feather on the limbs. So it's very strange looking. And number eight, this is the most special one. So the marking is, can be visible from the hair's spiral circular pattern, such as this. But in order to see the spiral pattern, I, we will assume the color of the hair must have at least three color because uh, on the horse hair on a squirrel, it must have the black dot and the white dot. I, I mean the black swirl and the white swirl. And then the third color will be the background color in order for Fushi to see the color for the white swirl and the black squirrel, right? So it has to be three colors. So when Fushi saw this, he was amazed and he couldn't believe his eyes. He prayed to the deity or to the God. He said, if the marking on this horse will bring some kind of a benefit to the humanity, would you please come forward? And when he said that, the horse came out from the water and come stood in front of him. So it was then uh, Fushi was able to study on a marking. And uh, I have to say that he must have very good memory because as soon as he want to take some notes or do something, the horse fly away. Notice the horse fly away. The horse did not emerge himself into the water. The horse fly away facing north. So that's why in number six, I say the horse have long hairy feet, enable the horse to fly. And also the feather on the limbs enable the horse to fly. So Patriarch Fushi was not able to take a note of it. I think that he have like a photo image in his memory. So when he come back, he tried to jot down everything. So, um, so this is what we see in the document. Now let's look look at the marking here. So this is the interpretation from, from the later scholar. So the horse, when he fly away, he was flying towards to north. So for some scholar, this is how they discover. Um, so the marking on the horse, the direction is the opposite with the modern map. So the south is on the top, north is in the bottom. And this north, it's situated in the rear tail. So when we look at this map here, we have to think of the opposite way. So the best way to relate this is imagine if I'm facing you, my right is your left. Your left is my right. Another way to think about this is that if I am Consider, considering my right as my right, but up in the heaven, you will consider my right as the left to the, from the heaven perspective. So everything works in the opposite. So keep that in mind. So the white dot represent yin. Black dot represent yin. So this is what you see here. So to make everybody to, to grasp the picture easier, I have all the number here. So you see all the number here. Let's look at this slide. I have my note here. So you can see one, three, five, seven, nine, it's on a yen number, on the odd number. Two, four, six, eight, ten is on the in number, which is the black dot. Do you see that? Okay, here, I also want to point out to you one, complement six, and two, complement seven, three, complement eight, four, complement nine, 
Fly complement ten. I say complement is because one one is the beginning number and one is inside. Six is outside. In other words, if we will look at it from the Tao Te Ching perspective, one is Tao. Six is virtue. Three is Tao. A is virtue. Two is Tao and seven is the manifestation on the application. Four and nine is the same. So here I put down inside, the number inside represent the Tao. It means the essence, the beginning number. And the outside number is derived from the inside number. So outside number, it's, um, it's visible. It's uh, what we can use in the application. One, two, three, four, five, they are all the inside number, inside, which is the beginning number. The beginning number, I mean the down the essence. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten is the manifestation number, it's the application. So another thing I want to point out to you is that, uh, so here, completed, uh, it can also be called finished or ending number. It's all synonym. It all means the same thing. Completion, it's finished or it ends. We can say that it starts from one, it ends at six. It starts from four, it completes at nine. It starts from two and it ends at seven. Okay. And then here, I want to explain to you that, see, we, we say that one is in, two is in, so it's white dot, black dot, white dot, black dot, all the way to 10. And 10 is the last number on this diagram. So after 10, you see how it comes to one. So 10 is just right next to one. So here, another cycle begins. Now let's look at the number in a different perspective. So yen has five number which is all odd number. And then yin has fine number, which is all even number. So if you would add the yin together, you will come up with total 25. All the yin is total 30. So if you look at this, sometimes you say, okay, 30 or 25, so what? <laughs> right now you can say, so what? Because we haven't get to the turtle map yet, but Later on, when we get to the turtle marking, you will see this number is very significant. So let's just hold our thoughts for now. 25 and 30 and this total 55. Okay, so we are just studying the map in the preliminary level. And notice five is exactly in the middle. Five is exactly in the middle. This is a very important message that you need to always keep in mind today. Okay, here, this one, any two number is difference by five. So if we, want, if we will look at any side and from the outside number, subtract the inside number, six minus one is five, eight minus three is five, seven minus two is five, nine minus four is five, and 10 is the outside number. 10 minus the inside number five, you also get five too. So what does this mean? Five is a very important number. Five is a necessary number to harmonize all things. It's located between the yin and yen. And so miraculously, five is also a yen number. It's also a odd number too. And when you look at this, you can see here, this is yin. Uh, I, I think it's better for me to say white dot. White dot and black dot. White dot and black dot. And white dot and black dot. So every time when you, when you go to the next number, it's white and black white and black, white and black. It means there's a harmony 
between each number, right? There is harmony between each position because there's white and black, white and black, white and black. It's not like white, 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 or black, 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 black. So it's white and black, white and black. And notice that from one to two is white to black. And the number, when the number increase, um, the black and the white also flip too. Here, I want to point out to you that two, this two here, two is the beginning of two symbols in Tai Chi, which represent the balance of yin and yin. And we can see that from here. In chapter 14, I use this picture to talk about Tai Chi. So on this picture, we have Wu Ji down in the bottom, which is void, emptiness. And Tai Chi is represented by this dot, this black dot, and which is also a synonym of this line, yin, Y-A-N-G. So Tai Chi really begins with a dot. And from this dot, it gives birth to the two symbol. And this two symbol is this two here. So from one to two, it's a major evolution, I, I would say. It's an evolution of uh, Wu Qi become Tai Chi and Tai Chi become the beginning of duality. So within the two symbol, which you can see here more clearly, it represents the pure yin and the pure yin. Or in the Bible term, we can say is the Adam and the Eve. Okay. After the two, from the two symbol, we see the four symbol. Therefore, here you see four, four colors, the black and the white here, and the black and the white here. So now let's look at how the number move. So if you look at the the drawing here, pay attention to the yellow highlight. One, three, five, seven, nine. It's moving clockwise. And it's in the increase uh, movement. So one is the beginning number. Nine is the ending number. This is very, very important. One is the beginning num number. Nine is the ending number. So nine, we call it the pure yin, uh, the completed number and maximum of yin. Uh, this, this term will all work. So this nine, it represents in this picture here, this, this will be the nine. And then later on, we will see that this will be the six. So nine right here, six right here. So we can see, right, one, three, so the movement is from one, three, five, seven, nine. It has to go through five in the middle here. Now let's look at the other set of the number. So the other set of the number start from four because in the previous slide, I say it ends in nine. So what's next? The next number has to be in the one next to it which is four. So four, two, and it has to come back to the center. 10, and then move out, eight, and six. So I call this a reduced number because from four to two is reduced. And uh, we don't consider 10 because uh, if you will look at two from 10, that will be increasing. So we have to skip this one. So from A to six is a reduced number. So for the in movement, it will be a reduction force. So four is the beginning number, six is the ending number. And the ending number we call it the pure in, the completed number, this is the completion number and the maximum of in. Okay, so this is, six, you see it here. This is the maximum, the pure in. Okay. So now I want to put these two together. 
One, three, five, seven, nine. Now we come back. Four, two, ten, a six. So if we will look at the marking on the horse, probably not many of us would know what does it mean. Maybe we will say, okay, it's just a whole bunch of dots on the horse. So what? <laughs> but for Fuji's perspective, he did not think of that way. He know that there's something special about the dot. In fact, there's something really special because he can see the movement of the yin and the yin, the increase and the decrease of the of the, the vibration. So here, if we will make it a circular shape, because it's increasing and decreasing. And five and 10 stays in the middle. So five and 10, we don't touch. So one, three, seven, nine. Nine is the maximum number. One is the beginning number. And then the in starts from four and the six. Therefore, four, two, a six. Therefore, we come up with this picture here. Hey, <laughs> okay. So you see from this image here, we have uh, one, three, seven, nine. This triagram represents one. This one represents three, and this one seven, this one nine. So if you would plug the number in, that will be one, three, seven, nine. And heaven is on the top and thunder is the beginning. And then when we look at this side, which begins from four, four, two, eight, six, therefore you come up with this, the other side of the A triagram, four, two, eight, six. So this is the exact same number, right? So this is the number that I was talking about. What's the number behind the, a triagram. So now let's look at this. So one, three, seven, nine, it's increase in yen, Y-A-N-G, and four, two, six, A is decrease. So when uh, yin is decreasing, yen is also increasing too. As you can see, um, if we can look at the yin and yen picture, we will be able to see that easier. Okay. Um, and number three, make some of, of yin. Make some of yin is followed by the beginning of yin. Number four, make some of yin is followed by the star of yin. So do you see that when nine is at the maximum, this is the beginning of the circle of the black area. And when the six is in the maximum, this is the beginning of the white part. And then the next one, number five, one, three, seven, nine, everything is on the left. This is the, the yin family, the male family. And this side is the woman, the yin family, or the, yeah, the yin family. Um, you can see here, I split it up. So this is the yin, the Y-A-N-G family, because everything comes out from here, which is the pure yin, Y-N-G. So the, the best way to look at this is that um, uh, if this four are not descendant, the grandfather is the yin. So I call it the yin family. And because the grandfather is the yin. And then this is the yin, Y-A-N. Everything is derived from the yin. This is the grandmother. <laughs> okay, number seven, one, three, seven, nine. You can see the energy moves up and four, two, six, A, the yin energy is coming down. So this concept is very important. And when you look at this, everything is, um, is in balance. As you can see, here is uh, heaven and here's earth. Let, let me show you this picture. This one is much easier to see. So you see three, three straight lines complement with 
three broken lines. And here you look at it, two, two straight lines and two broken lines. In other words, if you see a straight line here on the opposite side, it's the opposite. So here is broken line. And then when you come over here, it's a straight line. And then here, the water and the fire. Uh, middle line is broken, outside line is straight. And here, when you come over here, it's the opposite. So when you look at this picture, every direction that you look at is total balance. That, what does it mean? It's total balance, total harmony. They complement each other. They love each other. They help each other. Isn't that beautiful? So, so this is a picture of love. Okay, so, and also if you look at it from the family formation, this is in total harmony too. So father and mother stand right across from each other. So the father is protecting the youngest daughter and have the, the middle daughter next to the young daughter and the oldest daughter right here. And the mother is standing next to the old son and the youngest son. In other words, father um, and, and the oldest daughter comes in the pair. And the mother, because she's female, sometimes maybe she needs help in the housework. Therefore, she can always call the oldest son to help. So it's this kind of arrangement. I want to explain to you why there's a family formation in uh, a triagram because this one can be difficult to understand and uh, I want to take the time to explain to you. So how did the A triagram come up with this daughter and son perspective? So let's look at this picture here. So father is, of course, is the straight line, which is yin, Y-A-N-G. And mother is the yin, which is I mark in red. So let's start from the father first. So the father has the first son. And therefore, the oldest son received one bar. This is the oldest son. And the middle son, because he's in the middle, therefore, the, the bar is in the middle. And youngest son, because he is the youngest one, therefore, the, the bar is on the top. So if, if you can look at the location of the bar, you can tell, is this the older son or the middle son or the younger son? And same thing for the woman's side. For the woman's side, you can see on this one is the broken line, which represent the yin. And then this is the oldest daughter because she was the first one being born. And then the middle one, and then the youngest one. And the youngest one, because she's youngest, she receives the bar in the very top. So as you can see, each direction here, if you will add it up, because they complement each other, you can see that there is a three straight line and three broken line in each direction. Three broken line, and three straight line in each direction. So knowing the nine and the six is important because the nine represent yin and six represent yin. So this is very important when we study the I Ching because in Confucius annotation, this is how he annotated. So here I have a two example from the 64 hexagram. This is the fire and the water example. So in Confucius annotation, he will say the upper nine, the six, five, the nine, four, six, three, nine, two, and the beginning six. So the upper nine, it represents the yin in the upper position. And then six, five, six represents the yin in the fifth line. And this one means the yin in the fourth line. So on this one, uh, some translation will say six, 
six means the yin in the third place. So the same thing happened on this side too. Uh, from this hexagram, earth and heaven hexagram, uh, it's earth is all made out of a uh, six, so it will be in in the in the upper position, and then this one will be in in the fifth position, in in the fourth position. So later on, when we, when when we look at the annotation of the hexagram from Confucius, when somebody say nine three, then you will remember oh nine is referring to yin, and then three is is referred to the third line. So that's how significant is the nine and the six. So we study He Tu. So this picture is called He Tu. He Tu is very significant. It has a significant impact in uh, Eastern Chinese culture because from this He Tu, this is where the four seasons come from. Um, the four seasons, like uh, the farmer, they have to study in the four season how when is the best time to grow the crop, when is the best time to harvest, when is the best time to rest, when is the best time to plant the seed. And it serves the purpose for the five elements, which we don't have time to talk about this today. And the feng shui, Chinese feng shui, it also comes from the concept of he tu too. And then here, the time zone. Um, the Chinese time zone, Chinese has a, a different set of calendar. We know know the, the Chinese lunar calendar. It's also from He Tu to the, to the A triagram to the 64 hexagram and to this one. So the Chinese calendar is really complicated and we have to think the, the marking from the horse. And also the Chinese medicine, it's also from He Tu. So the He Tu also served the mapping purpose in the ancient time because in the ancient time, people would do the farming and agriculture, do their living based on this image here. So on the east, it's, it has more wood and on the west, it has more metal, south has more fire and north has more water. In USA, I think it's almost the same too. In south, as we can see that in Texas, Arizona, the South area, it has more of heat. And in the upper region and the upper state, it has more water, which means more snow. And on the east side, it has more wood. And on the west side, we all know that in the 1948, uh, around that time, we have the California gold rush. So this map works in China and also works in USA too. The concept of He Tu also is a map of the constellation. So the constellation, which we will not go into today, it's also really complicated too. So the He Tu has four sides. Each side is in charge of um, <clears throat> seven constellations. And each side is in charge by each deity. On this side is the white tiger of the west. This side is the azure dragon of the east, black tortoise on the north side, and vermilion bird on the south side. So if you want to study further on the Chinese astrology, oftentimes you will see this picture. And where does this picture come from? It comes from He Tu. So today we study the marking on the horse. Uh, we did not have time to study the marking of the turtle, but you can see one is very important because one is the beginning number from the turtle marking. One is also the beginning number from the horse. Three is on this side. Three is also on the, on the same side too. Five is in the center. Five is in the center. So five is very important. So in summary, <clears throat> how does this one become this one? It takes us to study some numerology and we understand that if we study in the increasing number from one, three, five, seven, nine, like uh, in the clockwise position, and then the counterclockwise position from four to 
A6, then we come up with this number. And therefore, this number also explain the, the energy flow for the yin and yang picture. And it also does the explanation for the ba gua too. So the number that we study today is really important because it also impact on our daily life too. <laughs> so next time when you go to the Tao temple, if you see the number of the flu play on the altar, you know that they put five because five is an auspicious number. You can see five right here. So a lot of time on the altar, we will put five fruit plate. So maybe next time when you start to go to buy some apple, you want to buy five. <laughs> if you will consult with some feng shui expert, the feng shui expert will suggest you some number. And you know that the number is really derived from the he tu, the, the marking from the horse. And sometimes when we plant the tree, so maybe five is a good number. Nine is also a good number too, but keep in mind, nine, it's, it's already in the maximum. So what happens when it's in the maximum? It's going to come down. Although nine is a maximum number, which sounds good, but you don't want it to be maxed out. <laughs> so five is a better number. So next time, if you go to buy something, keep in mind this picture the importance of this picture. Yeah. So if you do fine, nothing can go wrong. And then when you're gifting somebody here, I assume that we have some men here. <laughs> if you will give a pair of earrings to some ladies, it's better to throw in some other item to make it three. <laughs> because two is, uh, I mean, based on our study today, Two is the beginning of the duality, is the beginning of the four symbol. So three or five is good. So in my next session, I will do chapter 15. Uh, the title will be Not to Overfeel. If mistake were made or say during today's sharing, I ask the forgiveness from the Heavenly Mother, Buddha Mitreya, Jigong Buddha, Sujun Sumo, and Senior Masterly and Junior Masterly. Thank you. Thank you so much.